Kia ora, good evening. Invercargill City Councillor Karen Arnold last week urged the Community Trust of Southend to consider, reconsider rather, its decision not to write off a debt owed by the Southland Outdoor Stadium Trust. The Trust owes $400,000 to CETOS, a debt which Councillor Arnold says the Invercargill City Council should not have taken on. We caught up with her to find out why she thinks CETOS should reconsider. When I was reported in the media as saying, hey, the Community Trust of Southland should be doing something about this. Uh, Chairwoman Trish Boyle publicly said, oh, well, we can't um, wipe off that $400,000 loan because it wouldn't be fair or equitable to other outfits that we've loaned money to. And then all of a sudden, I've um, uncovered in the past few days the fact that that's what they've been doing for the Indoor Stadium Trust and um, I don't think that's fair or equitable. A member of the community has forwarded that um, information to me and um, I'm just curious as to whether when um, council representatives that were party to the discussions with the ILT, the Outdoor Stadium Trust, the Rugby Union, um, did we know um, about the fact that CETOS was an actual fact um, f funding the Indoor Leisure Stadium Trust to um, pay back a loan that it had granted. So do you think the decision may have changed had you been informed? Well this is the frustration I think as a councillor. We're in a governance um, role and we rely on the information put to us and so we're told that we've had ne negotiations for you know more than a year and this is the best that we can do. Um, I don't know who said what in those um, discussions over all those months. But I do know that we have to take at face value what is publicly said. And what has publicly been said by the Community Trust of Southland is we cannot wipe off that $400,000 debt because it wouldn't be fair to others we've loaned money to. And um, that's just not the case. If this decision was dragged out a little bit longer, do you think it would have changed anything? I think it could have because I think one of the, the comments that Councillor Amundsen made when we were debating whether to take over the rugby park as it was proposed to us, she said, and I, I concurred, she said the deal was the best that for the rugby union, it was the best for the outdoor stadium trust and it was the best for the community trust. Everyone got what they wanted. It was a bad deal for the ratepayer and people of the city and um, I think if we'd had more ammunition and been aware that um, it wasn't a level playing field then we would have had more um, room for negotiation I believe. Trish Boyle, the chairwoman, has indicated in the newspaper today that um, CTOS now finds themselves um, in a position where they can't do anything because unless the City Council reverses its decision, um, they can't enter into negotiations. So if there is a willingness to enter into negotiations, then I need to explore whether we can get a motion on the Council table within the next few weeks um, calling for discussions to be had. Meanwhile, the Community Trust of Southland has come back this afternoon saying its decision was consistent with the decision made for the indoor stadium's loan in 2008, which resulted in involved parties adjusting their annual funding contributions. The decision saw CETOS provide less annual funding to the indoor stadium, and we'll have more on that tomorrow. All general practices in Otago and Southland now offer free doctor visits to all children under six for standard of consultations. New Zealand GPs can choose how much they charge for a visit, although most medical practices offer free visits for under sixes, making the most of the Ministry of Health subsidies. In Otago and Southland, the majority of the 89 medical practices don't charge fees for children under six enrolled at their practice. Up until now, several Southland practices had chosen not to offer into the Ministry of Health's initiative. However, over the last three months, each practice has reached agreement with the local primary health organisation to provide their enrolled under sixes the standard consultations at no charge. Recent rain has eased the fire danger in the northern Southland and Catlins area and leading to the total fire ban being revoked for all areas except Naseby. Previously, Catlins and Northern Southland were in a total fire ban due to much drier conditions in these parts of the Southern Rural Fire District. 
A restricted fire season remains in place across the province, which means a permit has to be gained to light an open fire. Some burning can occur without a permit, including campfires, barbecues, incinerators, offal holes and hedge trimmings. However, people still are urged to take care. Anyone who lights a fire in the open is responsible for making sure the fire is safe and does not spread. Southern Rural Fire Staff reported today those in the district have burned exceptionally well during the dry summer and call out have been well below average. Manufacturing sales volumes rose in the December 2014 quarter across several industries. The volume of total manufacturing sales rose 0.9% after seasonal adjustments. The rise was led by a 7.2% increase in petroleum and coal product manufacturing with meat and dairy product manufacturing up by 0.9%. Sales rose for eight of the 12 manufacturing industries in the group. In actual terms, the total manufacturing sales volume was up 1.5% on the December 2013 quarter. The total manufacturing sales value was down 3.2% on the December 2013 quarter to $25.6 billion. The trend for the total manufacturing sales volume, which gives a longer term picture of movements, has been mainly rising since a low point in the June 2013 quarter, according to Statistics New Zealand. An Invercargill man took his first steps to battling mental health issues in Southland yesterday. Terry Lynch's first get-together for mental health consumers in Southland may have been small, but his intentions are big. Terry has plans to squash the stigma associated with mental health and reshape its services in Southland. This afternoon tea is about getting a group of consumers together and hopefully down the track leading to it be more organised and the vision further down the track. The first one was probably the goal, the vision further down the track is to get a consumer NGO because there's a lot of NGOs funded by the District Health Board but there's not a consumer NGO as yet or now in Invercargill. It's been a while since consumers have had a get together in Invercargill and I thought well you're the man on the spot with quite a bit of experience so go for it and feedback so far has been that it's a good idea. I think there's still stigma and discrimination alive and, and I can't say well in Southland but I think it's still present and after 20 years of like minds and that advertising to get rid of it, it's still there, but in a silent sort of way. Do stay with us still to come on the bulletin. Celebrating the South's heritage is in full swing. Welcome back. It may have been a wet weekend, but the rain wasn't enough to keep the crowds away from Invercargill's Donovan Park. The Southland AMP show was a hit with families on Saturday with huge numbers filling, filing through the gate. With competitions, family entertainment, rides and great food, the show had something for the whole family. Event organisers said the event was a complete success with more dairy entries, trade displays and entertainment than ever before. They said the show has gained real momentum and recent years and Southland has enjoyed a family atmosphere it provided. Planning for next year's AMP show began today and Southlanders are being told to expect it to be bigger and better in 2016. Those joining in on Heritage Month festivities were treated to a glimpse of our military history at the weekend. Heritage Month is in full swing and with the Anzac Centennial just around the corner, what better time for the Gore RSA to share a bit of its history with the public. The RSA opened its doors to the public for the weekend to show them a little behind the scenes and to spark interest in the coming Anzac commemorations. Vintage cars were on display alongside machinery and weaponry and an antiques roadshow saw historians discussing a wide variety of memorabilia. The Gore RSA took the time to remind public about this year's Anzac Day which will mark 100 years since World War I and asked the public to pay their respects to those who fought by attending this year's dawn service. And of course the Invercargill City Library was, were one of the first to get on board with Heritage Month and have planned a variety of events for the month.
Anyone digging into the depths of the city's history would most likely find themselves at the Invercargill City Library. So in the name of Heritage Month, the library is celebrating history and style. We're really um, pleased to be involved with Heritage Month this year and what we are doing is, um, well we've got these displays together um, throughout the library. Each section of the library has its own display looking back not just on the library's uh, heritage but on uh, Invercargill's heritage. Uh, so that will be running throughout the month, they'll be in place. And then throughout the whole month we're running a heritage hunt within the library. Um, when people come into the library they, they might see these little containers here and these containers are for the entries when they've completed them by uh, the answers are all in our displays. So uh, it's easy to do and then the first uh, correct entry that we draw will win the prize, which is an e-reader. The library says Heritage Month just highlights something people have always been fascinated with. We often, uh, just not actually during Heritage Month, but um, throughout the year really, there are always uh, people who are interested in accessing our archives, which is upstairs and information services. Um, and we've got a great resource there for people to access personal history, but also history of clubs and different um, organisations, sports clubs, whatever. Uh, yes, there's always a good uh, level of interest in Invercargill about what's gone before. But what is it about Invercargill's history which makes it worth celebrating? The thing that intrigues me about Invercargill's past is the fact that there have been so many people who have who've managed to uh, create a community and a life for themselves against all odds. You know, it's rugged territory, isn't it? You know, and there's a whole lot of adventure that's gone on in the past here, you know, and the, and the gold mining and the hunting and the fishing, they're all pretty edgy um, occupations, aren't they? So I think that's, uh, it's that ability for people in Invercargill in the past, oh, and maybe still now, who knows, but in the past to uh, be able to um, surmount all those difficulties and forge uh, a great community here. I think it's, this is a great uh, idea um, for any community, I guess, to um, be touching base with what's gone on in the past, what's gone uh, into forging the community that exists today. Um, I, I think it can't be um, undervalued, really, that whole um, recognition of what's gone before. The library will be hosting a range of different events throughout the month and will be participating in the CBD extravaganza on the 27th. Sharon Reese, South Today News. The newly restored and reimagined Matara Museum had its grand opening on the weekend to coincide with South and Heritage Months. The museum is based in an 1880s cottage known locally as Clemeter's Cottage. Amongst other treasures, it showcases the Matara paper mill and freezing works and uses touch screens to bring Matara's rich social and industrial heritage to life. The collection includes a strong set of local photographs dating back to the 1870s and a comprehensive local history archive. The museum Museum's full collection can be explored online now. And the Matara Museum is on Kana Street and is run by a dedicated team of volunteers. Time now to check out the weather. Your forecast on Q is brought to you by Environment Southland. Environment Southland wants to know what you think about our recreational water areas. Where do you go? What do you do? And your thoughts about the water quality. You could win one of five $100 vouchers simply by completing their survey. The survey will help them find out whether the water is being tested in the right places and how the service can be improved. Complete the survey online by going to Environment Southland's website or pick up a hard copy from Environment Southland, the Southland District Council, Gore District Council, Invercargill City Council or Public Health South. And here's the weather for today, Monday the 9th of March. Auckland City coming in on 22 degrees, Wellington on 19 along with Christchurch, 20s for Dunedin and Queenstown, 18 for Gore, Invercargill striking a high of 15 and 16 for Stewart Island. Scattered rain developing tomorrow morning with some heavy falls inland clearing about the coast in the evening. Lights will, winds will be light at first with southwesterly changing in the afternoon. 20s for Wyndham and Wyndham tomorrow. 
And the Cargill chasing a high of 19 to Tāpiri 18 and 20 for Gore. More showers than the other areas also, a high of 11 overnight for Queenstown and 20 the high there tomorrow. In the marine forecast for Fovo, variable 10 knots changing to northerly 15 knots, a south southerly swell of 2 metres and becoming moderate sea with poor visibility and rain for a time. For Pusiga, north 50, th northerly 35 knots to southwest 15 knots and a southwest swell of 3 metres and visibility poor in rain at times. To the long range outlook for Wednesday, becoming fine during the morning with light winds, mainly fine with northerlies on Thursday, a period of rain and southwest change, and finally, mainly fine with westerly breezes on Friday. And that's it from us this Monday evening. Sport is along shortly from the news team, though. It's good night.